Hi folks, Dr. Robert Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now this video is going to be about anxiety, depression, mood disorders, um, but I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna try and make it a little bit more generic. I'm gonna try and talk about stress as well. Uh, and I wanna try and uh, introduce um, a concept about why polyphenols um, in the diet, so that's um, dietary phytonutrients of a polyphenolic structure, why they have particular um, uh, mood elevating effects. Now, it used to be thought, and it was a common dogma, that the brain didn't um, regenerate brain cells. It used to be thought that um, brain cells were created during development, so that would be while we were an embryo, and those brain cell, that brain cell number um, was determined by development, and then and then uh, those the, the number of brain cells declined over time. Uh, that's no, now known not to be true and there are areas of the brain that are known to regenerate brain cells and the hippocampus is one of the areas that has been identified where neurogenesis occurs so that's the, the generation of new brain cells and the hippocampus certain areas of the of the hippocampus, of the hippocampus are able to generate brain cells and those brain cells those neurons they migrate into the brain and they 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 replace uh, worn out brain cells. They they they're a, they're a way of, of of the brain repairing itself. So this uh, is is now being actively studied, and it's known that the brain can generate uh, regenerate neurons. And this is required for learning. It's required for uh, improved intelligence. Uh, and this is why you know possibly as you get older, as long as you have the ability to generate these uh, these new neurons, you become wiser. Um, now there are a number of things that can inhibit this process and one of the most potent inhibitors of neurogenesis is st stress uh, and this is maybe why stress is so damaging to your health and it also may be why stress uh, is um, associated with mood disorders um, we're all under you know constant stress in modern life um, perhaps different stresses um, than were ex you know the people in the past were exposed to but uh, most people are exposed to constant stress uh, it stops them sleeping uh, they, people develop mood disorders and this may relate to uh, the potent ability of stress to inhibit this neurogenesis process um, now there are a number of factors uh, uh, aging is another factor that can inhibit neurogenesis um, as we get older it's you know everything declines in your body so it's no surprise that as you get older this neurogenic process uh, is decreased um, and there are other factors as well um, so aging uh, there is there's a possibility that if anxiety or depression uh, are present they can also inhibit this uh, process of creating new brain cells but the good news is that there are certain things that can stimulate this process of creating new brain cells um, and some of them are dietary and some of them are environmental one of the things that can stimulate uh, this neurogenic process is enrichment so if you have um, your if your environment is an enriching environment if you have new things to learn you're learning a musical instrument you're learning a new language this is able to stimulate neurogenesis and this that's not surprising because new neurons are needed to create new memories uh, and they're needed for the uh, you know, the, the ability to remember things um, there are a number of dietary factors as well um, that can stimulate neurogenesis uh, and it appears that caloric restriction is one of those things and this may relate to um, the ability of caloric restriction to cause an extension in um, in, in the life of, of particular animals it hasn't really been studied in humans but caloric restriction in rodents for example can extend their life significantly uh, and that might relate to the fact that this is a neuroprotective effect if the brain is functioning well uh, other uh, systems in the body will also function well uh, and, and therefore this may be related now in terms of dietary things that you can eat that will stimulate uh, the creation of new brain cells um, a number of s s a number of substances have been studied most of this work has been done nearly all of this work has been done uh, in animals so therefore we have to take it with uh, the, you know the caveat that always comes with those types of studies but um, there are consistent findings and one of the things that will stimulate the creation of new brain cells are polyphenols now these polyphenols they're antioxidants that are found in plant foods plants create polyphenols one group of polyphenols are the flavonoids um, but there are many different types of polyphenols they will have the similar kind of chemical structure uh, and polyphenols uh, have been found to um, stimulate neurogenesis um, and this is quite interesting because uh, it may relate to their 
antioxidant ability. It's known that flavonoids, for example, and other polyphenols are neuroprotective. They have some kind of ability to protect neurons. Uh, no mechanism has really fully been explained, but one of the one of the uh, suggestions is that uh, flavonoids can actually stimulate this um, this neurogenesis within the hippocampus and that allows uh, new brain cells to pass into the brain they they migrate into the brain and this may have a neuroprotective effect now this may explain why flavonoids and um, uh, polyphenols are so protective of mood disorders um, we know that taking diets high in polyphenols and high uh, in you know types of polyphenols, particularly flavonoids, uh, many of the neuroprotective um, uh, herbs that have been shown to be protective of mood disorders are high in antioxidants, particularly polyphenols, uh, and this may all fit together. So foods high in polyphenols or high in antioxidants may have this neuroprotective effect and they may be able to um, stimulate um, neurogenesis. Now what is very interesting is that a lot of the um, the antidepressant drugs that are now on the market, so that's the uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the selective noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors, the selective uh, dopamine reuptake inhibitors. There's a whole class of uh, you know, different classes of drugs that are available to treat depression. What's not commonly known about these drugs is that many of them are actually very good antioxidants. Um, originally, we were told that these drugs are effective at treating mood disorders because they um, are able to manipulate neurotransmission within the brain through the inhibition of particular um, enzymes or transport systems and this changes the amount of serotonin dopamine or noradrenaline in the brain now the end result maybe you know the the, the way these um, the end product of these drugs may actually be that case it may be that they are actually changing uh, you know um, neurotransmitter levels within the brain but there is some suggestion now that they don't actually um, they don't actually have that effect through the mechanism that we're told. Um, they may actually have multiple mechanisms within the brain, and one of the ideas is that they actually um, they're actually potent antioxidants in the brain, and they're working in a very similar way to the flavonoids or the or, you know the polyphenols. If you talk about the bigger group, the polyphenols that you might actually get in your diet. So uh, dietary polyphenols may actually have a very similar mode of effect to many of the uh, antidepressant drugs that are currently on the market. Um, now the difference between the two is that uh, one is obviously a prescription drug, the other is something that's freely available in food. Um, and in polyphenols really, uh, because they're found in food, there are no side effects affected with them. I'm talking about you know if you increase your polyphenol content through your diet. Um, I'm not really talking about supplementing polyphenols, although Many studies have done that and shown that it doesn't have any side effects and it is very effective. But you can get these substances through your diet and they have zero side effects. And that is in contrast with um, the, the, the drug route, which um, if you look at the studies, the, the drugs are not really particularly more effective than a placebo in many cases. And they're certainly not um, any more effective than some of the, let's call them natural treatments, particularly uh, eating certain types of food. Um, but they are associated with... Um, certain side effects so really this is a choice you know if you look at the uh, if you look at the literature um, yeah, there are alternatives to taking drugs if you have mild depression and if you have you know maybe the generalized um, anxiety disorder these are mild forms of mood disorder I would never say that you know you could treat um, you know serious um, uh, serious psychosis with uh, with nutrition all the time but certainly many people are mildly depressed and they have mild levels of anxiety and those studies that have been done on humans and animals show that um, improving your diet and taking uh, particular dietary um, components and eating more of them, uh, those that are particularly high in antioxidants, is a very effective way at treating uh, those mood disorders. And I just wanted to give uh, in this video an, an overview of how that might occur. Flavonoids, polyphenols, uh, they're, they're known to be um, neuroprotective and, and this interaction with the hippocampus, with the um, um, uh, with the you know with the stimulation of neurogenesis um, may be one of those mechanisms by which um, polyphenols are particularly uh, effective so if you if you do have mild depression you do have you know an underlying kind of general anxiety that's that's not what I would call severe 
um, and you look at your diet, if you think you're not eating enough plant foods, if you don't think there are many polyphenols in your diet, uh, it's a pretty free, uh, cheap, safe way to try and treat that uh, mood disorder. But ultimately, um, you can improve your diet, but if the stress that you're under is still present, um, it's only going to have limited effects. And this is why I keep coming back to this, uh, this you know, looking at the factor that, that stress is. Uh, really, those people, nearly everybody I talk to who has a mood disorder, nearly everybody I question about it when they tell me they're either anxious or depressed, they have some underlying, some underlying stress in their life that they're finding it difficult to cope with. And really, the key to fighting anxiety, fighting depression, is to identify what the stress is and eliminate it. Nutrition can help. Nutrition will help. Nutrition has been shown in studies to help decrease stress levels. It's been shown to help normalize cortisol levels, uh, you know, dietary polyphenols or neuroprotective. But it's that elimination of stress that's the most important component. And that's what I always say to look at first. Use the nutrition and the, um, you know, lifestyle management in order to be able to minimize your stress together. And that is usually the most effective way to deal in the long term with mood disorders. Um, drugs are a good way of um, treating people with severe depression and severe anxiety in the short term but over the long term they don't have the same success as a more of a holistic approach in terms of stress management and dietary manipulation so i hope you found that interesting as always eat well stay healthy and protect yourself and i will see you soon for another video take care